Hello. Welcome to Zion United Church of Christ. I am Rodney Botts, a member of this church, and I will be guiding you through the history of Zion United Church of Christ from the early 1500s to today. Let's begin. Welcome to Zion, part of the United Church of Christ, where God is all loving and inclusive, where the Church of Jesus Christ welcomes and accepts everyone as they are where your mind is nourished as much as your soul, where Jesus the healer meets Jesus the revolutionary, where together we grow a just and peaceful world. Our current pastor is Reverend Bryce Hughes. Let's begin with a history. Why did the Germans immigrate to Burlington, Iowa? Well, in 1830, 40,000 people left Germany because of some of these reasons. After the Napoleonic Wars ended in 1815, the German economy was suffering. In addition, inheritance traditions of dividing farms among families was making farms so small that they were unsuccessful. The population had grown very large and was dependent on the potato to sustain it. In 1840, rural Germany was struck by the potato blight, which led to the famine. Additionally, foreign imports, especially cloth from England, flooded the German market and German industry could not compete. Britain had created a cotton gin and was exporting a lot of their textiles. England went from 260 million to 6.3 billion yards of textile output. They had 82% of the world market. Therefore, Germany's population was becoming poor, and the German princes had to subsidize it. Well, the German princes decided to react to that situation, so they sponsored societies in 1830 and 40s that provided one-way tickets for the poor to the United States with the idea that in the long run it was cheaper than subsidizing the poor. Here's a statement from a German who came from Baden. He says, my name is Franz Hecker. I am from Baden in Germany. I came to the US in despair after we failed to create a democratic Germany with our March Revolution. Seeking King Frederick William IV crowned again was bad enough. But when the army crushed the uprising in support of the Constitution, I knew I had to leave. It seems as if we might succeed in creating a democratic elected government, but it was not to be. The origins of Zion's faith started in Prussia, Germany. The Reformation began in October 31, 1517, when Martin Luther nailed 95 theses to the door of the castle church in Wittenberg, Germany. Luther was excommunicated by the Pope Leo X on January the 3rd, 1521, in a decree called Decit Romana Pontifica. Two other reformers had a lot to do with the formation of our church. The Swiss theologian Huldrich Zwingli and the French exile Jean Calvin. In 1555, the Peace of Augsburg instituted the principle that allowed a German ruler to decide whether Catholicism or Lutheranism would be practiced in his realm. The Prussian ruling family converted to the Reform faith in 1617 although its subjects were primarily Lutheran. This did not resolve the choice of religion and it started a 30-year war from 1618 to 1648. The conflict ended in Peace of Westerfall. By the early 19th century, rationalism and pietism had softened the division between German Protestants and opened the way for a united denomination. 
the political will for this development came from King Frederick William III, who ascended to the Prussian throne in 1797. One year after he ascended to the throne in 1798, Frederick William III, being Sumus Episcopus, supreme governor of the Protestant churches, decreed a new common liturgy agenda. He created a service book to be published for use in both the Lutheran and Reformed congregations. The king, a Reformed Christian, lived in a denominationally mixed marriage with a Lutheran queen, Louisa, from 1776 to 1810, which is why they never partook of communion together. Needless to say, after this new edict, they could take communion together. The UCC as an institution began in the formation thoughts of Luther, Calvin, Spinner, and Zwigli. Luther's most important doctrine was justification by faith alone through God's grace. Luther began to teach that salvation is a blessing of God's grace, attainable solely through faith in Jesus as the Messiah. He was also very concerned about the selling of indulgences. Heldrich Zwingli objected to the veneration of saints and the selling of indulgences. He differed with Luther on transubstantiation and communion. He believed infants should receive baptism at birth, the parishioners should study science, and that the state can be combined with the church. Calvin, historians say, was generally understood primarily as a Renaissance humanist who aimed to apply the novelties of humanism to recover a biblical understanding of Christianity. He coined TULIP, which means T stands for the total depravity, U stands for unconditional election, L stood for limited atonement, I stood for irresistible grace, P stood for the preservations of saints. He, too, studied in Basel, Switzerland. Philip Spinner, the father of pietism, emphasized personal transformation through spiritual rebirth and renewal, individual devotion and piety. The piety was to emphasize on biblical doctrine with reformed emphasis on individual piety and living in a vigorous Christian life. Our two pastors that started our church in our area, Pastor Rieger and Pastor Zimmerman, received their seminary education here at the Basel Institute. From the onset, the Basel Institute Society set out to be Protestant but non-denominational. It was developed arising from the concern of many theologians that about what would happen if Napoleon managed to seize the city of Basel. Both Calvinists from Basel and Lutherans from Wittenberg made a holy vow to establish the seminary in the city was spared. The Basel mission was the result. The mission was founded as the Basel Mission Society in 1815. The mission later changed its name to the Basel Evangelical Missionary Society and then to the Basel Mission. The society built a school to train Dutch, German, and British missionaries in 1816. Since this time, the mission has worked in Russia, the Gold Coast, and Ghana, from 1828 in India, from 1834, 1840 in the U.S., beginning in St. Louis, in China from 1847, Cameroon from 1886, Borneo from 1921, Nigeria from 1951, and Latin America and the Sudan from 1972-1973. 
Today, the Basel mission is called Mission 21. Missions 21's purpose is to do missions, provide theological education, and provide places for cultural exchange and research. Their emphasis specifically is in the area of poverty reduction, peace building, health, women and gender issues. They provided training for those that were parishioners that needed work, such as teaching them how to do printing, tile manufacturing, weaving, and many other things. Mission 21 operates internationally to bring about a fairer world. Since 1815, it has been sending out a message of hope based on the Christian faith and human rights. Needless to say, one of the people that was educated at this missionary site and was sent to our location in the Midwest, specifically south of St. Louis, was Joseph Rieger. And he created, in his tenure, the Eden Theological Seminary, which is one of the six seminaries of the United Church of Christ. Eden is a community committed to fighting for the greater good across the globe. Before 1930, our church received all their supplies from Eden Seminary. Eden Theological Seminary was established in the summer of 1850 in Marthasville, Missouri, and it was specifically to fit the needs of our area's frontier. These evangelical congregations required better educated pastors who were less focused on European traditions and more suited to Midwestern North American religious life. The Eden Seminary currently gives a Masters of Community Relations, Masters of Divinity, Masters of Art and Professional Studies, and a doctorate in the ministry. Joseph Rieger also was the person that helped create the first UCC church in Burlington. This church is at the corner of 6th and Columbia. The congregation was started in 1841. It was to be a gathering place for German worshipers. They met in homes and local buildings such as Marion Hall before they had a building. This building was dedicated in 1851. In 1843, Joseph Rieger, a roving missionary from the Basel Missionary Society, became the minister for this church. He served 12 families then, and he stayed for two years. He arranged for those 12 families to meet then after in the Presbyterian church until they had their own church. In 1849, these families felt they needed their own church building. They then secured the land at the top of Snake Alley in Columbia. Zion Church was split from this first German evangelical church at the top of the hill. The charter members of the first church were Jacob Wellam, who was a butcher, Siebert Mogul, who was a wholesaler, John Philip Kreckenbaum, which was a grocer, and then finally Fred Funk, who was a grocer and a feed store owner. There is no documentation concerning the cause for the split. It took several years for the split between the two churches to heal. During that split, Zion UCC was not a member of the Evangelical Senate of North America. Zion met initially at Marion Hall, across from where City Hall now stands. They were organized on March 13, 1864. In the intervening 17 months, they acquired the land where our current church stands, secured C.A. Dunham to draw up the plans, and constructed the first church building on 5th Street. Zion's first minister, the Reverend John Zimmerman, as well as Joseph Rieger from the Church on the Hill were educated at Basel Mission Seminary in Switzerland. 
Zimmerman remained as pastor for Zion UCC for 25 years. He left in December 1889 in order to give full time to his office as president of the Evangelical Senate of North America. Zion's first church building was August the 13th, 1865. Zion UCC was dedicated and was described in the Burlington Hawkeye article as one of the most beautiful church edifices of Burlington's Gothic architecture. It was 64 feet in length with a spire of 104 feet high and seating capacity of 500. The original church cost $17,000. Morning and evening services were in German. There were English services in the afternoon for Burlington's pastors such as Walter Salter. At the time of its opening, it was the biggest and tallest church in town. Zion instructed Dunham to design a Gothic structure resembling a typical church in Germany. His other efforts were the German Methodist, Christ Episcopal, First Congregational, First Baptist, and Spring Creek Methodist. These illustrated his skill with all things Gothic. What was happening in Burlington when all of this growth was occurring and our church was being first occupied? Well, in 1873, the population became 15,000. It rose to 30,000 in 1893. We built 10 new schools. We created eight new churches. The downtown streets were paved with brick. The street rail system was created. The electric lighting system was created. The telephone system was built. Sewer systems were installed. In 1879, no other Iowa town had more manufactured workers. Because of this growth and the church parishioners decided, well, let's remodel the church in 1891. So in 1891, they removed the tower that's currently there. The entrance moved to the North Tower, get a new pipe organ, new pew, new room added downstairs. And 1892, families had communion together. Well, in 1891, families were not allowed to sit together. Women and men had to split on the opposite sides of the sanctuary. Therefore, they took communion separately. In 1892, that was changed. Up to 1922, a central chalice was used for communion. FYI, in 1953, all those serving communion wore black robes. This was changed in 1980. Late 2000, another change came with Reverend Jane Willen, who introduced communion on a stick. In 1894, Zion and St. Luke's congregation discussed establishing a Protestant hospital here. As a result of these discussions, Reverend Kurtz, Zion's pastor at the time, called a meeting of the pastors of the seven current German churches in Burlington to consider establishing a Protestant hospital here. On January the 14th, 1895, the Hospital Association was organized. Pastor Kurtz presented a constitution and an article of incorporation. On August the 1st, 1895, that same year, the Burlington Protestant Hospital was opened in the Garrett Homestead, corner of 6th and Columbia. Today we know that as the Phillips House at the top of Snake Alley. Patient capacity for this hospital was 12 ward rooms. Costs were a dollar per day for a stay. There was a head nurse with two thoroughly trained nurses assisting. The average stay in the hospital in those days was 26 days. Three years later, in 1898, the first baby was born in the hospital. Most babies were born at home at that time. Our church school was started in 1864 uh, with F.G. Klein. 
He provided religious instruction, was carried through Sunday school and confirmation. Perfect attendance was rewarded with certificates and pins. If you were sick, you needed a signed excuse. If you visited another church, you needed a visitor's card or a bulletin to count toward perfect attendance. The Bible verses were printed on little tickets. If the verses were learned, children were given prize tickets to buy special gifts. The evangelical catechism was memorized by everyone. English was taught to German immigrants that came to our church. In 1931, the Sunday school classes were meeting all over the church. Attendance for adults and children was near 200. With such limited space, the congregation voted to add an additional building in the rear of the church for school classrooms. A word about the German to English transition. Between 1864 to 1925, German was spoken at Zion. The shift from German to English began to proceed in the early 1900s and relatively swiftly. In 1917, it was divided by, decided by vote to hold German language services on the last Sunday of each month for a six month trial basis. July the 7th, 1918, an additional vote opened all meetings to women and determined that church business would be conducted in English. Later in September of that same year, German became used for little 10-minute sermons immediately following the Sunday morning English language services just to make sure the German was still being used. March 3, 1919, it was voted to have German services on the first Sunday of each month while retaining English on the other Sundays. In the October, they voted to have German services at 3 p.m. And this continued from November until January of 1920. In 1927, the Zion Constitution was translated from German to English. In September of 1928, the council voted to discontinue German worship services. So it appears the transition from German to English occurred in stages, with some going back and forth on when and the frequency of it, from roughly 1915 to 1928. Although the trend of German use in worship reflected more marginalization over that time. There were several factors at work, of course. The First World War had a tremendous impact on German use in America generally. Additionally, the people of Zion had become primarily second generation and had grown up in a wider English-speaking American culture. And of course, there was the invention of an increasingly widespread use of the telephone. We had community lunches beginning on October the 20th, 1977 to 1999. The first community luncheon with the bazaar was held. Our first menu included homemade soups, made rights called Zion burgers, salads, and desserts. The first luncheon and a bazaar netted $1,350. The entire amount was donated to missions. That was motivation for the second luncheon. That was held five months later in March of 1978. Favorite dessert included Mrs. Matau's sunshine cake and Ethel Nessus made four lemon meringue pies, which were a favorite. People in offices would call and order lunches. The crowds grew and at one luncheon we served 450 people. People lined up to enter for the 11 a.m. opening. The line reached out to the curb on 5th Street. FYI, that was when Mercy Hospital was very close. In February of 1988, the women voted to discontinue the luncheons, but in 1990 they decided to resume but limit it to 
three luncheons in the fall, September, October, and November, and three in the spring, March, April, and May. However, after 22 years, the women were older and some had passed away. There was no longer enough help to continue. The last lunch was held in the spring of 1999. During that time, the luncheons raised over $100,000. Proceeds were shared locally, statewide, nationally, and internationally. 1988, Reverend Gary Chapman was involved in the development of the Friedheim community. The community provides apartments for persons aged 62 years or older. Here are some of the other things the church was involved in. 1950, Social Action Committee. 1952, Reverend Donald Schultz did the Heifer Program. 1964, the Racial Justice Now was adopted. 1968, the Christian Action Incorporated. Help for Lower Income Families was started. 1968, Head Start at Zion. 1968, Scholarships to Seminary Students. In 1986, the Vietnam Refugee Family Support Program was begun. 1995, the Partners Some Grace United Methodist Program was begun. 2014, the Relay for Life to redo the homeless shelter was put on in 1917 or 2017 excuse me we began to help in Guatemala's children's schools needless to say all of this was to help those that are of concern we also were involved in the city's paintathon effort in 1992. We believe only service organizations were involved then. The second year, 1993, was when Zion became involved. We have had from 10 to 25 members help with scraping, caulking, and painting of homes. Some of the years when our members are low, we have teamed with other organizations or churches. The week after Labor Day is painting week. And no matter what shape the house is in at the beginning of the week, by Saturday the work always seems to get done. 2010, we got involved with Bridging the Gap. It was originally started by a grant we received from the Strengthen Rural Iowa program. It was a $20,000 grant to establish a sustainable program that would reach out and improve the greater community. We chose a poverty program. We started with the food pantry, then added job search assistance, then added the love fund distribution disbursement, and then helped with budget assistance. We had a clothing bank for a while, but it didn't work out, so we discontinued it. We look at this program as one that is there to help people in need and give them a hand up and not just a hand out. We also did fun things like entertainment programs. On stage on the lower level of the church was perfect for plays and skits. We still have three act playbooks indicating how creative and dedicated the fellowship class was in 1933 as example in the uh, picture on the upper left hand side of the screen. A play titled At the Wharf was presented at Oak Street School to raise funds for the school. Mr. and Mrs. Lewis Ida, Helen Bickle, and F.W. Rausch acted in the show. Fred Rausch's name is on many of the playbooks. He sang in the choir until he was 90 years old. We also did Christmas program pageants, uh, and they were done in the front of the church. Above is a picture on the right-hand side of 25 performers in a show with Mary Joseph and baby Jesus elevated high in the choir loft. The scene includes spotlights and stars. It was a beautiful presentation. 1970, encouraged by Pastor David Michaels, our youth group presented Peter, Paul, and Mary's style presentation that was said to be groovy. 
More recently on Christmas show, Dr. Newhart's Christmas Cure, it was presented two different years, not in succession, with Lyle Gibson, me, and Don Lutz singing, and Gail and two other ladies giving everybody healthy ideas. That's the end of our presentation, but you can catch up with the rest of our history in more detail by going to Amazon.com and purchasing our book. Uh, it is there for your um, purchase. Thank you very much, and God bless you all.